Hey guys, it's Sam. Today I just want to go through an NCLE contact lens fitting example. I just want to kind of talk through it, uh, just go through kind of my thought process in answering a question like this. Uh, there's a lot of information found within the one example, so we could use it as different points of learning. So let's just kind of start here. Um, I wrote on the board here, we have our refraction, so our refraction, our manifest refraction, minus 350 minus one a quarter at 180. So that is the prescription. Uh, typically it's refracted from you know 12 millimeter distance between the eye itself and the foropter. Um, when we talk about vertex distance, that's what we're considering. And then we have some K readings here. So for the right eye, we have 43 um, at 180 by 44 and a quarter at 90. And what that's showing, K readings show the steepest and the flattest meridian of the cornea. So notice some things to notice here in looking at this example. Um, we see that it's in what? It's in minus cylinder form, negative 350 minus one a quarter at 180. So the first thing to do uh, with contact lenses, we always fit in minus cylinder form. So what if the prescription looked like this? Right, so a lot of times on the NCLE, um, you'll get a question and it'll start, it'll look kind of funky like this, where it's, you know, this one might be minus 475 plus one and a quarter at axis 90. Um, so we know if we see it in plus cylinder form, that that's not correct, we have to transpose. And I do have some videos on transposition, but really quickly, what you do is you add the cylinder value, the plus one and a quarter, to the minus 475, which will give you negative 350. So if you algebraically add those together, you get minus 350. You just change the sign. So instead of plus one and a quarter, it's minus one and a quarter. And then you always rotate the axis 90 degrees. So first step for any contact lens fitting problem is to transpose it if it's not already in minus cylinder form as this one was presented. So we'll just kind of clean that up. So we see it's in minus cylinder form, but we know that we talked about vertex distance. So that's also something to consider. So you always have to consider uh, compensating for vertex distance if the prescription is four diopters or greater. Um, but what's tricky with this example is the sphere power is minus 350, so you're led to believe, oh, I don't need to compensate. But then what we have to consider is the cylinder value. So what really you need to compensate in both major meridians, if it's necessary. So for example, we have minus 350 at 180. So I'm going to draw like an optical cross here. And you always, you want to know that the 180 meridian is the horizontal meridian, right? That doesn't change. So we know 90 degrees away from that, which is the 90, the vertical meridian, all of the cylinder value is present. So 350 plus the one and a quarter, so minus 350 plus minus one and a quarter will give us minus 475. And what stands out about that number at the 90 is that it's over four diopters, right? So we know that we have to compensate for vertex distance. And this isn't a full-blown uh, vertex distance lesson, but what one rule of thumb which you can remember from this is it takes about five diopters of strength to need to compensate at just about a quarter diopter. So for the test, you're not gonna, you're not gonna use a calculator and be doing your effective power equals one plus minus you, you don't need to do that. You just have to learn some rules of thumb. Kind of like it takes about five diopters to need to compensate a quarter diopter. Um, it takes almost 10 diopters of strength to need to compensate it down a diopter. Rule of thumb, all contact lens prescriptions when you're compensating them, because they're always going from off the eye to on the eye, they're all moving this way which means that all lenses, when you compensate for vertex distance, become more plus power or less minus, you can think of it. 
So a minus 475 in this meridian is really going to just uh, go down to about a minus 450. It's very small. It's just becoming a little bit more plus power, kind of negligible. So then we just have to take it off our optical cross here. So we do negative 350 at 180. And I do have lessons on this. So instead of going from a negative 350 to a 475, we're just traveling from a negative 350 to a negative 450. So that's about one diopter. I know that's probably hard to see, but that would be your compensated uh, prescription. So it's in minus cylinder form, always put in minus cylinder form, then you always have to check to compensate for vertex distance. So our compensated minus cylinder manifest refraction is minus 350 minus 1 at 180. Okay, so those are some things to be aware of when you're answering these questions. Now let's look at the K reading. First off, what do K readings reveal? K readings, all K readings reveal are the dioptric power of the cornea in the steepest and the flattest meridian. So just to back it up, if this is our eyeball here, all right, we'll put our crystalline lens here and ciliary body and we'll make it somewhat fancy for visual macula, all right? So as light comes into the eye, we know that the cornea and the crystalline lens are the refractive medium of the eye. They're the parts of the eye that bend that light so it lands on the macula, on the fovea, for our sharp central vision. What the K readings reveal, or the corneal dioptric power of the eye, it, it just takes the measurement in the steepest and the flattest meridian, and it shows you what the dioptric value is. So it's saying this eye is presenting 43 diopters of strength along that 180 plus 43, and it's presenting 44 and a quarter diopters of strength plus 44 and a quarter diopters of strength along the 90, which is our up and down meridian. It literally is just telling you the power of the eye. So, and we know that the crystalline lens supplies about 17 diopters of strength, and that can change with the accommodation, but that's not necessary for this example. But you, what you want to know is the K readings reveal the power of the cornea, and because of that, it reveals if there's astigmatism present on the cornea. Or we can infer from K readings, it'll reveal if there's a lenticular or lens astigmatism because you can see what's present in the refraction and you can compare that with the corneal readings. So these K readings are saying 43 at 180, horizontal, 44 and a quarter at 90, vertical. So just a point of learning here, we see that it's steeper, 44 and a quarter diopters, it's, it's more, it's stronger diopter power along that vertical meridian at the 90, that's called with the rule of astigmatism. If this was opposite and it was uh, 44 and a quarter at 180 and 43 at 90, it would be against the rule of astigmatism. Anything within 30 degrees, either way of the 90 degree meridian, is with the rule, same with against the rule. Anything within 30 degrees of the 180 meridian will be considered against the rule of astigmatism. In between those is called oblique astigmatism. These are all types of regular astigmatisms. So for this example, um, we put it in minus cylinder form. We uh, compensate for vertex distance. So now, you know, a lot of the questions are going to say, you know, what, what's the best lens for this patient? What should I fit them with? Well, you have some options here. Um, you could use a soft contact lens, right? There's no reason you couldn't use a soft lens, but that would have to be a toric contact lens because soft contact lenses drape the cornea and they, um, they're presenting all the power within the lens. Whereas you could use a gas permeable lens or a hard lens, um, but you wouldn't need the astigmatism component in that. Um, because it's less than, this is with the rule of astigmatism, and it's less than three diopters of with the rule of astigmatism. So you could technically use a spherical lens, gas permeable, 
and it will vault the cornea. It will fill in with our tears and it will effectively create a new cornea behind that surface, a smooth refractive surface because all the astigmatism is corneal because it matches 43 to 44 and a quarter is 1.25 diopters. It's the same thing that was present in our refraction. So it matches that. So we know that you could vault the cornea and mask that astigmatism. So you could say a minus 350 uh, spherical gas permeable lens would take care of this as well. Um, something you'll run into on these questions that would be good to know. A lot of times it'll say steeper than K or uh, flatter than K for your answer. All you need to know is if it says a half a diopter steeper than K, you have to remember your rules. There's SAM, which I have a really easy time remembering, and FAP. So SAM is steeper ed minus, FAP is flatter ed plus. So whatever your final answer is, so if it said a half a diopter steeper than K, and we were going to say we're going to fit a minus 350 spherical gas permeable, steeper than K, steeper ed minus. So if we're adding a half a diopter of minus power to that, our answer would be minus four. And that would be our final answer. That is your final step. When it says flatter than K, steeper than K, that's the last thing you do. So it's going to be uh, minus cylinder form, compensate for vertex distance, evaluate the type of astigmatism uh, and the K readings compared to the manifest refraction. So you know, is it corneal astigmatism? Is it lenticular astigmatism? So you kind of know which lenses you can use. And then the last step is take into account your directive to add to uh, fit it flatter than K or steeper than K. And then use your steeper add minus, flatter add plus for those. So this is kind of just a, a basic example uh, of just some of the types of questions you'll encounter on the NCLE. And a lot of the test is just, is just using logic and knowing some basic steps, kind of like what we just went over here, and being able to just think through these, right? Nothing is insurmountable. Uh, if you went through some examples like this and you just start to understand those concepts, uh, you'll really see that um, they're very workable. And at minimum, you could, you could say, well, that's not right. You know, they didn't compensate for vertex distance and it's a eight diopter lens. I know, I know that power has to change some. Or, you know, you could say, well, it's, it says flatter, add, you know, fit it flatter than K and it's still the same power. So I know this one's not right. So you could just think through the answers and then you could tackle your test. Um, I hope this video is helpful. If it has, please share it, um, comment. Let me know what types of videos you'd like to see. This actually, this originated from a comment. Somebody asked if I would uh, do a quick example. So I said, sure, why not? So hope it was helpful.